Now, how does the person get that information? Does it go to the doctor by uh, some kind of electronic device, or do they read it on their smartphone, or how do they know what it is? Well, the, generally speaking, one advises type 1 diabetics to go to their pediatric endocrinologist uh -huh. or to their adult endocrinologist, who will be uh, well-versed with these various devices. Um, there are apps out there that help them do what's called a closed loop system mm -hmm. where the blood sugar measurement feeds into the computer and then decides how much insulin to give. Mm -hmm. And in fact, today there are advances in that field which are moving very fast, mm -hmm. uh, making things much simpler for the type 1 diabetic. Wow. Very interesting. So it sounds like type 1 diabetes, which used to be a terrible problem in terms of complications, it's being managed much better and much better and better. And so at this point, the main thing is a person accepting the diagnosis right. and getting into the proper treatment. And that acceptance has an issue, especially with young people. Uh -huh. As you can imagine, young children going through puberty, wanting to be normal, wanting to be similar to yeah. their peers, right. uh, have a lot of difficulty with this. So there are some psychological aspects sure. that need to be looked at as well in order to for them to understand and for them to deal with the disease. So it sounds like if we have parents out there who are watching who have children with uh, type 1 diabetes, a very important thing is helping their kids get that kind of psychological support so that they can right. make the right choices. Right. Yeah, I hear. Um, so Dr. Leroy, in your, from your point of view, we've talked about type 1 diabetes, the who gets it and what's causing it and how we diagnose it and how treatment has really improved the outcome significantly. Uh, what do you see being on the horizon going forward in type 1 diabetes? So there's a lot of research, as I mentioned, going on with these devices. That's what uh -huh. we call artificial pancreas, uh -huh. whereby you monitor, you compute, and then you inject the insulin. But there's also an aspect that's very important. I mentioned at the beginning that this is an autoimmune disease. Mm where the body makes antibodies against the beta cell and destroys it. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of data now that's coming out whereby investigators can actually use therapies that will suppress the autoimmune disease. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so even if you do transplantation or you do uh, beta cell, just the cells injected into the liver, mm -hmm. all of that will produce the insulin, which is good, but that's on condition you suppress the autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a balance between the cells making the insulin and this destructive process being suppressed. Mm -hmm. And that's been the holy grail, as you would say, and that's what's being investigated intensively for the type 1 diabetic. Thank you, Dr. Leroy, for that uh, overview of diabetes type 1. Uh, in closing, do you have any comments for our viewers about Kind of to sum up diabetes type 1, is this going to be a curable disease? Um, and some people might also be wondering, really essentially, what changes that a, a child would be healthy and suddenly develop type 1 diabetes and start losing weight and being thirsty and having all these issues? So in most of our understanding of type 1 disease, um, we believe there is a genetic component. The individuals who have certain genes that are protective against type 1 and there are genes that they, in a way, need to have in order for them to be predisposed to the disease. There's also some epidemiological studies that have suggested that if there's a viral infection in the community, this may damage the beta cell, which will then be recognized as a foreign cell and the antibodies will be produced. And that's, as I said before, we have to somehow suppress the antibody production. Um, those, those re results really only uh, under give us understanding on certain number of the patients. In general, we don't quite understand why certain individuals get the disease and certain individuals are protected. Yeah. But there seems to be a, a genetic component. Um, we should also mention that there's hope for most of our patients, even though the cure for the disease is going to take some time, as I said, there are studies where immunosuppressive uh, components are, are used. There are studies where they've transplanted cells from the beta cell into the liver mm. and patients have reduced their amount of insulin they require. Mm. These are not cures, but these are still studies that are ongoing. Right. While there's no cure yet for type 1 diabetes, 
as I mentioned, there's a lot of device, insulin injection, and management of patients to really help them live with the disease and prevent the complications.